Hello everybody. My name is Don Torsha. I am with Basement to Roof Home Inspections. Today I wanted to give you some information on mold and mold testing as it applies to a residential home inspection. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a mold dude. I'm a home inspector. So what I'm doing, I'm going to give you the cooked down, reader's condensed, layman's terms of, of mold. What it is and, and how we mostly, how we test it and then the, the, um, the, some of the basics. Okay, uh, Mold is everywhere. Every, every all over our bodies, all over the world is mold and it's in the spores. Basically it's like seeds. So what happens is when the mold spore finds some place, a source of food, it attaches itself. So let's just say one of our little specks here is our mold spore that lands on our paper. Mold loves paper. It's like going to the buffet, like the Chinese buffet or somewhere and you can just eat all you want, okay? That's what paper is, like drywall and wood, stuff like that for mold. So here's our mold food source or paper. It also needs moisture, just like we do. Everything living needs moisture. So what happens is a mold comes along, let's say it's your basement, your kitchen attic, wherever it is, mold spore lands, gets moisture, humidity, starts to grow. And what happens with mold is it'll start like a little here, if you can see this, there's a little speck, and then it gets bigger, forms a colony. Then it gets bigger, and I did this for the, to show you the progression of, of the mold growing. So you'll see, sometimes you'll see just a little patch like this, like in the corner of the bathroom in the shower or under the vanity or something like that. You see this little patch like this one down here. But if you go to somewhere else like attic or inside like in your basement wall where it's been leaking and you see a big, ugly, hairy thing of mold, that's been there longer. It starts out as a little bit as a colony and what mold does is it forms colonies and then it spreads out with the, the spores spread out. Okay, I use black because it's easier to show up on, on my black piece of paper but you hear commonly the word black mold, the term black mold. Mold comes in multiple different colors. White, light blue, gray, brown, black, pink. There is thousands of different strains, different species of mold. Okay, and there's only a couple that are associated with the black mold. Like Stachybotrys is the strain that's associated with the toxic black mold or Cladosporium. There's a couple different main species of mold that is toxic that affects people. Your typical average, let's say if you have mold in your attic, that's usually aspergillus or penicillium or something where it's less, less, it's not the toxic mold. Now the thing about mold is this, is you, you and I, there could be 20 people that walk past our patch of mold. There's only going to be a couple that are affected. I could rub my face in it like this, right? Mold in my face. It doesn't bother me. I don't have an allergy. You can have a younger person or an older person or, or someone who is allergic to mold and they just get in the vicinity this close and it's going to be, they're going to be affected by the mold. So it's not everybody that it bothers and it's different degrees that, that, it, that the mold bothers people. So the thing is you can find it wherever there's the food source and there's the humidity. Okay? And then the fact that mold is black means nothing more than it's colored black. No, it's not, not all mold that is black is, quote, black mold, a toxic mold. In a home inspection, I find it commonly. The, the place I, in a week, I could find mold in four attics every week. The most common source that I find in a home inspection is in the attic. The next would be the basement, like typically in a little nook or cranny somewhere, and then in a bathroom. Typically, the source of the humidity in a home inspection that I find mold is usually a bath fan. 
that vents into the attic. And that's in not always, but typically older houses where the, they've figured things out along the lines and they've changed how, how houses are ventilated and the bath fans. So commonly in an older house, the bath fan, they just took the bath, the duct for the bath fan, just dumped it into the attic. So what happens is that humidity from taking a bath, especially if you have teenage daughters, like, you know, you, you understand showers and baths, okay? Well, what happens is that humidity gets in that clothes in, that, in, in the attic and it fosters and it grows mold. And I'll see it common, like right above the bath duct, there's mold growing. Also in attics, a lot of times when people, when, when you have your, let's say you have your house, okay, here's your house right here, okay. There's the ceiling, there's the drywall ceiling right here. What happens frequently is when people insulate their, their attic, what happens is they jam the insulation right into here thinking, oh, we're going to seal this house up and we're not going to get any cold air into our house. No, that's a bad thing. What happens is, not always, but typically the houses have a soffit vent right here. Here's your soffit, this part right here. There's usually a vent where we're letting the air come in. And then also there's an outlet. Sometimes it's the can vents. You see them like that, the round vents on top of the roof. Other times it's a ridge vent where there's, there's, a, there's a slit cut on the top of your house and you can see like a bump on the top of the house. That's designed for the air to come in and out. If you plug this up thinking, hey, we're gonna, our house isn't going to be so cold, we don't want that cold air in here. The problem is, when, if, say if there's a bath upstairs and there's your bath fan in the ceiling and that duct is dumping humidity in your attic, it's not going to vent out and it'll cause mold. And then also, if you have your humidifier, the humidifier on your furnace, if that's turned up too high, there's going to be additional humidity in your house that will cause mold. Or just like in the summertime, if the high humidity, <coughs> excuse me, like here in Michigan, we can have a high humidity. <coughs> excuse me. If that humidity is accumulating in your attic, you're going to get cause mold. Basement. Okay, a lot of times, let's say here's our floor, here's our basement. If you, have, if you have water getting in through cracks or rod hole leaks in your basement, here's your wall, here's your drywall, it gets in behind there. A lot of times that's a source of, of mold. Okay, so we, we determined how, how it's going, all right, how we got the mold, we, the, the food source, the food source, the humidity the typical locations of mold that we find it also. Let's now get into, all right, so boom, we found mold. There's somewhere in our house we found mold. What do we do now? To do the testing part of the mold to find out, and we don't always have to test because if you look at it, clearly it's mold. If you want to do the test, the test is going to tell you the strain, the species, and that's typically for people who have the, the, the greater allergy is more of a concern. Oh, no, we don't want any mold. Okay, so what we'll do now is this. We're going to get into the testing procedures as it applies to a home inspection. Again, this is layman's terms here. So if you're a scientist and there's something I'm missing, I, I'd like a little grace, please. So what we typically do for surface mold. Surface mold is visual. You can see there's mold, okay? We do a surface test, and or I call it a tape test. And what we have is this: we get this from the lab. That's a little piece of clear, sticky uh, film, like saran wrap, right? So what we'll do is we'll take this sticky film and we'll stick it and pull it. We're trying to pull up some of the mold. Then we take, I got a sheet here from the lab. What I do is I'll put this sticky stuff right here on the sheet that I get from the lab. Put it there. And I'll send this off to the lab. Fill out all the information in your house and all that. Send it off to the lab. 
the lab will give us results typically in under two days, but usually sometimes the next day depends on how busy and then what time of the day that we get the test to the lab. Okay. If there, now that's for surface mold. Let's say you're in your house and it smells like you go to the basement or you're smelling musty moldiness and you're like, hey, this is a problem. This you're not going to smell. But if you're smelling like, man, I can tell the mold in my house, then we move into a different type of testing. That testing is we're going to do an air sample. And what we do is this. We're taking, pulling air out of the house and we, we send it off to the lab. So here is how we do the air test right here. Have a tripod set up. And this is our little pump right here. So what this pump is doing is, pump is pulling air from the house into this little canister here. And that canister is sticky on the inside, so what happens is the air and all the mold, it's called an impactor is what it's called. As the, as the mold comes into here, it sticks to this, right? So what we'll do is, we'll set this up and typically in a house, we usually do three samples, two minimum, typically three samples. It'll be like the basement, a bedroom. We also do a sample on the outside on the front porch. That sample on the outside on the front porch is called the control sample. It lets us know what is happening on the outside. We want to know the difference between the type, the strain, the concentration, the amount, what's happening in the house as opposed to the outside. So we'll do a control sample, we'll do a test on the front porch, then we'll do a test where the, it's most prevalent, like in the basement or in the bedroom, depending on you know, where you're, you're feeling it, you're, you're testing, you're coming up with the mold more so. So we have the little canister, turn our machine on and what it's doing is pulling air through the little canister and we have it for a set it's five minutes and what's happening is this whole time is pulling air into here picking up mold and the spores and then then the lab takes then what I do is this after the after this test is ran turn it off take this off I'll write down your address, uh, 123 Oak Street, and then I'll put on here a control sample or basement or master bedroom, wherever we come from. We cannot do this <coughs> in an attic or a crawl space because what happens, all the dust in the air, it, cl it, cl it clogs this up and, and, it, and it just throws off the sampling. So we cannot do that in, in, that, in the high dusty area. Okay, so here we have our we have our sample. We also earlier we did our surface test. This is our air test. Send this off to the lab, and then the lab will give us lab will give us a report. They had X amount of spores of this species and different the strain of mold. It'll tell us typically there's four or five different molds present in a house. There's never just a mold. There's there's some that, that we talked about that's not going to bother you. And if it's a high humidity, like a basement, there, there may be the, the toxic mold that we talked about earlier. So that report will give us, we found 285 sp spores and we found this species. And that will be in the, in the report. All right, so now let's say we, we found the mold, figured out it, we tested it, we have it. Now, now what do we do from here? The best way to solve it is call, deal with a mold company, a mold remediation company. And there's a lot of them out here. Uh, if you're doing a home inspection, if you're doing it, if you're finding this as part of a home inspection, your realtor will likely have somebody. I, I have a mold guy that I like, that I work with. The mold guy will come, they'll take that report from the lab, they'll, set, they'll do a visual assessment, they'll figure out, they're going to look for where is the moisture coming from? Now, if you had a flood, obviously there's a source of the moisture, right? They'll look at, okay, into your attic. If you have mold in the attic, they're going to want to figure out 
is your attic properly ventilated? They're gonna do they're gonna do a visual assessment. Then the, from that, the from from the visual assessment <clears throat> and the lab report, they're gonna figure out well what what do we need to do? What's our course of action? It may be cutting out the drywall, it may be spraying, they may have a, a big fan. It's called an air scrubber. Maybe a big fan with a HEPA filter that pulling all the air out and that HEPA filter traps the spores. If it's in the attic, they'll typically take a HEPA vacuum, a big, powerful HEPA vacuum that's going to suck the spores, pull out the spores on, let's say if you have it in your attic and the mold's growing on the plywood in your attic, what they're going to do, the first thing they're going to do is vacuum it to get the spores off. Then they're going to treat it. They'll spray and there's different chemicals or enzymes or different processes that the mold remediation company will use to kill the mold after they pull the spores out. Now sometimes they also have uh, enzymes or I don't want any chemicals but process that will encapsulate the mold spores that will seal them up and they don't have to vacuum. There's a lot of different ways, there's a lot of companies, a lot of different ways that they do mold, mold remediation. So you'll want to check out, get some information, ask the guy, what are you going to put on here? Uh, what's, what's, your, um, what's your guarantee and, and what's the process? And typically what will happen is after they do the remediation, there's going to be a retest, there's going to be a confirmation test. Either the, the company or some people will have somebody independent like myself to come back and retest so that there, there's that, that break of the, the fox guarding the hen house kind of thing where the, the, the mold company is doing his and somebody else is doing the confirmation so it's independent. That, that's how that will work also. Um, I'm Don Torsha. I, I appreciate you listening to the video. Uh, I attempted to give you some 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 reader's condensed version. Like I said, dumb down. If you're uh, no more, if you're a scientist or mole guy, then I, I appreciate that. But this is this is part of a home inspection. I thank you very much. Thank you.